What's up guys and welcome back to Software and Audio Solutions and today we're talking about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Season 2 the Reloaded version which is the latest update for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Now ladies and gentlemen something I just want to get out there is this over here the selection screen over here literally looks like I am picking a series on Netflix. Um, but yeah anyways that's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 for you. Anyways, so a lot of people are experiencing FPS loss, game stutters, um, just in general a shit show of a gameplay experience. And today I'm going to show you what a lot of people are doing wrong with their game. And don't worry, I'm not just going to do the in-game settings. I will go through the config file because a lot of people have been asking me, Yo dude, what should I put my total cores at or half my cores? What is the config file? What are you doing there? What should I be doing in there? Don't worry, I got you covered. And I'll also go over the NVIDIA control panel settings as well to make your game look much better. And also to run much smoother as well. A lot of people have been sending me emails and also been complaining in my comments down below on my videos saying that they have way better machines than me and they still do 80 fps inside this game and they can't achieve more than it all right so let's jump straight into the settings and let me show you what you should be doing right now with the latest update i have done this before but i'm going to go more in depth with this because a lot of people don't understand what the upscaling and sharpening is actually meant for okay so Right now, at this very moment, I'm using AMD FSR 1.0, and it runs with my specific machine really, really well. I have a 9700K, I have an RTX 2060 OC, and 16 gigs of RAM. Everything has been overclocked, and yeah, my game runs perfectly fine with AMD FSR. I can see everything clearly. That's my own personal preference. All right, now... NVIDIA DLSS. A lot of people are getting NVIDIA DLSS confused with Modern Warfare 2. If you are running NVIDIA DLSS, okay, the only reason why you would use this is if you are running your game at 1440p or higher. If you are running your game at 1080p, there's no point in you putting this on. There's no point. There's no point in you putting the video DLSS on if you're running your game at 1080p or lower than that. Okay? So if you're running at 1440p, or higher then go with NVIDIA DLSS and then I do recommend either going with balanced to get really good performance and quality at the same time but if your machine is struggling a little bit you can see it's just struggling a slight bit with FPS then go with performance I do not recommend I repeat I do not recommend ultra performance if you are using NVIDIA DLSS there's a lot of blur that happens in the game on the left and right hand side when you move now obviously you don't stand still in the fucking game so you're going to see a lot of blur happen in the game on the left and right hand side so don't use ultra performance yes it's going to give you an FPS boost but do you really want to have way more FPS but your game looks like shit no you don't so go with the balanced over here if you are using the video DLSS and you're running your game at 1440p and higher okay a lot of people do use the video DLSS with 1080p as well and they achieve the FPS that they want and the game still looks good it's going to be your own personal preference but I just wanted to explain this to you guys if you are running a 1440p monitor and higher than that not 1080p, not 720p, don't go with that. If you're running 1080p or 720p, I highly recommend that you go with AMD FSR 1.0 if you've got a mid-tier to high-tier machine, okay? And you're running your game at 1080p. If you've got a lower generation graphics card with a lower generation CPU and you just got a, like, a low-end gaming laptop or a low-end gaming PC, I highly recommend going with AMD FSR 2.1. It literally tells you on the right-hand side of here that it says cutting-edge upscaling technology developed from the ground up to produce high-resolution frames from lower-resolution inputs. It physically tells you what this does on the right-hand side, okay? So if you're running anything low, like a budget gaming laptop, budget gaming PC, go with AMD FSR 2.1. You can try this out. If you're not satisfied with this, go with Fidelity FX Cache. A lot of people are still preferring Fidelity FX Cache. The reason why is it gives you really good sharpening in the game and it also gives you really good FPS. Now, I've went over and gone over every single upscaling, applied these settings, restarted my game, restarted the shader optimization so that they apply the settings because you're going to have to every time restart your shader optimization when you apply any of these 
you're going to need to do that, okay? So it takes a lot of time and dedication to make these videos and to find out what is the best settings for you guys right now. So please, for the love of fuck, leave a like. I would really do appreciate it. And leave a comment down below which one actually works the best for you in the upscaling method and what type of machine you are running, all right? And leave a like and actually leave some feedback if this works for you. Be like, yo, dude, thanks, this actually worked. Or, yo, dude, this one works better for me. Or, this one works better for me. Do that so then I can know what type of machine you're running and I can know what you are using to achieve better frames in the game, okay? It does help the community and it does also help the people that's watching my video, okay? Go ahead and do that, please. Okay, so like I said before, Fidelity FX Cache is something that people are recommending right now because it's just in, in general, like 80% of the gaming community is using Fidelity FX Cache. Now, there's obviously people going to be in my comments going to be like, yo, dude, but I use NVIDIA DLSS or I use NVIDIA DLAA or I use NVIDIA image scaling right if you are using the video image scaling i highly recommend you go with the native so it can run the native resolution of your monitor so 1080p or let's say 720p 1080p 1440p 2k 4k whatever the hell you're playing your game at you are going to go with native over here a lot of people also do choose like quality so the game looks really really good instead of using just their native resolution and then the game doesn't look that great or people go with ultra quality over here, right? I do recommend going with native, then it will push out the native resolution of your monitor if you're using the video image scaling. Please just play around with this. You have to physically play around with it and find out what's going to be the best for you. I've played around with this already for you, so I do recommend if you are playing this game right now and you want the best FPS with the best quality as well, you're going to go with AMD FSR 1.0. If you're running a mid-tier to high-tier machine, or you are going to go with AMD FSR 2.1 with a mid-tier to low-tier machine or Fidelity FX Cache. You can have a mid-tier to low-tier to high-end machine. Fidelity FX Cache is for everyone out there. So those are the upscalings I recommend you should be using. Okay, so it's either this, it's either that, or it's either this. If you are running a 1440p monitor and higher and your machine is really good, go with NVIDIA DLSS and go with Balanced and then you can do your own sharpening inside here at your own personal preference. All right. Okay. So now if you are not using NVIDIA DLSS and you're using AMD FSR, I highly recommend you keep your game at Filmic SMAA T2 times. The reason why I keep my game like this is because then you don't get jagged edges inside your game. You don't want jagged edges happening in your game. But if you are losing FPS and you can see that your machine isn't capable of running this game over 80 frames per second, I highly recommend then going to SMAA T2 times and leave it there. Go to anti-analyzing quality and then put this either at high or at normal if you are struggling with FPS inside this game. This will work for you. Then what you're going to need to do is if you're running mid-tier to low-tier machines, go all the way down to about 60 over here, go from normal to low. There's no physical difference. You can't really see it. It's not that noticeable from normal to low in the texture resolution. Texture filter anastropic, I highly recommend if you're running a low-tier to mid-tier machine, all the way to a high tier machine keep this at high always okay nearby level of detail is going to be for mid tier to low tier machines distant level of detail low tier to mid tier machines if you're running anything like mine like my machine or higher okay anything like mine or higher then i recommend you go over here you go with filmic smaa t2 times which is not going to give you any jacket edges in the game you go to anti-analyzing and go to ultra quality you're going to push this all the way to 90 percent on your VRAM scale, you're going to go to normal. You do not need this to be on high. You're going to go to normal. You're going to keep this at high. You're going to change this to high and you're going to change this to high. This is the best you can use right now in this little options over here all the way till about here. It's the best settings you can use for Modern Warfare 2. It doesn't matter what game mode you play, if you're playing competitive, if you're playing like just general games like, you know, Search and Destroy, Free For All, Team Deathmatch, whatever you are playing, this is the best you can be using right now for Modern Warfare 2's latest updates. Right, ladies and gentlemen, something that plays a very, very big role inside the game to boost your FPS by like 30 frames, to all the way to about 40 frames, is just changing this and that's about it. You just need to change this over here. You're going to open up your file explorer and you're going to go to your documents folder, go to Call of Duty, 
go to players and then go to this over here where it says options 3.cot22 and you're going to open this up with any notepad or any editing software that you can edit with and scroll all the way down to where you see render a work account. Now at this very moment you are going to put your total cores inside here. I have an 8 core 8 thread CPU, it's a 9700K with a water cooling block on it. Now it doesn't matter if it's water cooled, air cooled, super cooled, no no cooled, I don't give a fuck what cooled you have, it doesn't really matter as long as you put your total cores inside here. That's all you need to do, okay? So if you have 4 cores you're going to put Four here you're literally just going to type four if you have four total cores not your performance cores your total cores it doesn't matter if you're running a ryzen machine or an intel machine you're going to put your total cores inside here so if you have four cores you put four there if you have six you put six there if you have eight you put eight there if you have ten you put ten there if you have twelve you put twelve there if you have all the way up to twenty four cores if you're one of the people that has twenty four cores inside here you're going to put the max of it 16 you're not going to put 24 there you're going to put 16 there trust me this does work i've tested this out on a machine with 24 cores if you put 24 cores there you lose about 5 to 10 fps but when you put it on 16 and you have a 24 core machine in total cores you gain the fps that you should be gaining okay so i'm going to put mine back on 8 and then you're going to leave it at its total cores from here. From here, you're just going to click on File. You're going to click on Save. And you're going to close out of this. All right, let's jump straight into the next step. All right, so the next step I highly recommend you go ahead and do is download the latest version of your graphics card drivers. This is for NVIDIA users. You're going to download 531.41, and it's the latest driver version for NVIDIA graphics cards. Now, you're going to need to do this for AMD users as well. So if you are an AMD user, go ahead and download the latest driver. It plays a very big role inside your game. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the next step... I recommend you go ahead and do is this over here if you are an nvidia user like me and you've never done this before you're going to right click on your desktop and open up nvidia control panel just like this and let nvidia control panel open and then once it's opened you are going to go to adjust image settings with preview and have yours on use the advanced 2d image settings and click on take me there you're going to go to manage 2d settings and you're going to go inside here now a lot of people have left me comments asking, yo dude, why don't you go to program settings and select Modern Warfare 2 and then do the settings inside there. The reason why I don't do that and why I do global settings is because this is actually going to help you for every single game you are going to be playing, not just Modern Warfare 2. It's going to help you for every single game you play. So all you're going to need to do is just copy all of these I have inside here. I'm not going to explain them again because I basically explain them in every single fucking video. I'm not going to do that again. Just follow every single step here. Copy mine as is and you should be good to go. Okay? Follow these steps. You can just pause the video, copy everything as it is inside here and you'll be good to go. That one plays the highest role inside your game for stuttering. Please go ahead and put that on 100 gigs. Threaded optimization, always on. The rest, just copy them and you'll be good to go these still hold up for 2023 for every single game you are playing right now so go ahead and copy these settings over here once you're done with that you're going to apply these settings your screen might flash a few times don't worry about that it's just applying the settings once you're done with that you're going to go to config around physics and you're going to go over here and select your dedicated graphics card not your cpu not auto select your dedicated graphics card and say apply once you're done with that, you're going to go to adjust test of color settings and you're going to come inside here. Now I have my overall brightness of my screen on 50% and then I have the contrast at 65% and then I have the gamma at its default which is 1.00, right? Digital vibrance plays a very big role in every single game you're going to be playing and the reason why I put mine at 95 is the digital vibrance in all my games I actually play looks so much better. So you don't just have to, you know, use NVIDIA filters and stuff like that because NVIDIA filters actually decreases FPS inside your games where you could just come in here and make your game pop a lot and make your game look really, really well. Now, for people out there that subscribe to my YouTube channel, they already know this. If you are brand new to my video, trust me, this does work. Go ahead and pull this all the way down. You'll see your screen go to black and white. And if you pull it all the way up to about where your sweet spot would be, mine is 95. You can copy this if you want to, but it's going to depend on your display unit you're currently running or your monitor. From here, you're just going to say apply, and then you can just close out of this. Ladies and gentlemen, if this worked for you, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're on New Year. And as always, I hope this helped you, and peace out.